Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. When Leo Fender's engineers and other early creators of guitar amplifiers were refining their designs, they were trying for amplifiers that would be highly linear. They would consider an amplifier distorting at high volumes to be a badge of shame. But it didn't take long for electric guitar players to realize that the sound of distortion from a tube amplifier that's been cranked can actually sound pretty good. So it didn't take too long for people to become inspired to try to create little boxes to create that kind of sound on purpose. Boxes that create a moderate amount of distortion are often called distortion pedals. Boxes that create more moderate distortion are often called overdrive pedals. And boxes that make more extreme kinds of distortion are often called fuzz pedals. Now, all of these pedals, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz, create distortion. So the terminology is a little confusing. I'm going to save fuzz pedals for another lecture. And in this lecture, we'll focus on overdrive and distortion designs, particularly designs that use diodes. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the simple standard inverting and non-inverting amplifier configurations of operational amplifiers. If you're not, I suggest checking out this lecture I did titled, Three Op Amp Circuits All Electrical and Computer Engineers Should Know by Heart. So there's this falstad.com website with a lot of great stuff. There's a whole bunch of applets about physics and math and stuff like that that's pretty cool. But the main thing that caught my attention was this online circuit simulator. So let's play with it. So in all of the examples I'm going to do, I'm going to use a triangle wave input of 82 hertz. That corresponds to the lowest note on an electric guitar in standard tuning. Now, this particular example has a non-inverting amplifier configuration. This is going to have a gain of 1 plus 10K over 1K, the feedback resistance over the resistance to ground. So that's going to be 1 plus 10 or 11. The input signal here is a 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal, and so I get an 11 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal out. Of course, if you had a guitar pedal running off a 9-volt battery, the op amp wouldn't be able to swing that far, but that's not important for what we're talking about right now. This isn't trying to model any particular actual pedal. Oh, and I should mention, I'll put a GitHub link below where I'll include all of the files for these examples so you can load them up in the Falstad application and try them out yourself and experiment. Here, I've added a couple diodes in the feedback loop in parallel with that 10K resistor. Now, let's think about the output that we're getting here. If I stop the simulation for a second, this little tiny zone here around the horizontal axis, that corresponds to what we saw earlier without the diode. That corresponds to a gain of 11. It's not very long. That corresponds to the case where you see the dots wiggling in the 10K resistor, but you don't see the dots wiggling in the diodes. It's kind of hard to see, but trust me, it's going on. All right, so what's happening in the more extreme parts of the graph is that as the voltage here is getting higher, eventually one or the other of the diodes conducts, depending on if you're up here or if you're down here. As those diodes start to conduct, it effectively lowers this feedback resistance in the gain formula. So for higher input values, you wind up with effectively lower gains. So you have a gain of 11 in here, in this region, and then eventually if these diodes are fully conducting, you could imagine that this 10K resistor is basically bypassed and if you can imagine that that feedback resistance is essentially getting close to zero, the gain is now one plus the feedback resistance over the resistance here going to ground. And so that's going to be pretty close to one. And then that's the gain that you would find here. So this kind of waveform warping effect goes by the name of soft clipping because – 
Although the gain becomes lower, the output never actually brick walls. Of course, in practice, you'll eventually hit the limit of the voltage on the output of the op amp, and it will brick wall there, but not from the effect of the diodes. Guitar pedals that use this kind of soft clipping distortion are usually termed overdrive pedals. Often designers will put another resistor in series with these diodes, so that limits the amount that the gain shrinks for those stronger inputs. So we just looked at the non-inverting configuration. Let's check out the inverting configuration. Here I have the same kind of input. I have 10K and 1K, but the gain formula for the inverting configuration doesn't have that one plus like in the non-inverting configuration. So the gain here is just 10 over one namely 10. So my 1 volt peak to peak input gives me a 10 volt peak to peak output. So now I've taken a couple of diodes and put them in parallel with the 10k resistor in the feedback loop. As before, when you see this section around the horizontal axis, that corresponds to the maximum gain. That's the situation in which you see the little dots in the 10K moving, but you don't see the dots in the diodes moving. Now, when you have a more extreme voltage going in, then one or the other diodes is going to conduct, effectively lowering the feedback resistance and lowering the gain, giving you this soft clipping effect. Again, this kind of soft clipping distortion is usually used in pedals called overdrive pedals instead of distortion pedals. Now, if you want the kind of distortion that is used in pedals called distortion pedals instead of just overdrive pedals, then you might want to use this kind of hard clipping scheme. So here I have a 1K resistor to limit the current, and here I have back-to-back -back diodes going to ground. So there's no op amps in this particular distortion core, although usually these kinds of circuits will have an op amp in front that controls the gain of the signal going into this clipping circuit. Now, in the lower left corner here, the green line is the input voltage. The yellow line is actually the current that the source has to provide, and you'll see that looks a little funky. Now, at this particular point, just putting a one volt peak to peak signal in, so it's going from minus 500 millivolts to 500 millivolts, we're not getting a whole lot of distortion. The peaks of the triangle waves are getting rounded off. But if we start to increase the level of the signal going in, say make it two volts peak to peak, now we'll see that there's a good deal more rounding off of the extremes of the triangle wave. Let's push that a little further. What if we put in four volts peak to peak? Now it's clipping a little bit more. What about eight volts peak to peak? There you go. Notice that it's not an absolute brick wall limit the way you would typically see in something like an op amp that's using a lot of negative feedback to get linearity. That kind of configuration is typically very linear up into the point where the op amp just can't keep up and then it just brick walls at that point. Here it is rounded off a little bit, but unlike the soft clipping stages we looked at previously, this does hit more of a hard limit. Now, all of the examples I've shown you so far implement symmetric distortion, but you don't have to implement symmetric distortion. You can play games like using one diode going one direction and two diodes going the other direction. So we get some kind of rounding off going one direction and we get much more flat topping going the other direction. And you can play the same kind of games with the non-inverting and inverting soft clipper configurations I showed you earlier. Okay, I just ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which was probably not the best idea while recording a lecture. Anyway, let's see. Let's look at some examples. This is the classic Ibanez Tube Screamer, which incidentally is not Rhett Shull's favorite pedal, apparently. Anyway, if we dig in here a little bit, don't worry about the JFETs here. This is part of the electronic switching bypass circuitry. These are just being used as switches. For the output, we have an emitter follower, just a single BJT here. And let's go look at the input. Oh, we have another emitter follower voltage buffer at the input. Nothing fancy there. 
let's see, zooming out a little bit. There's some tone control stuff. Here's a volume control. The main action here are these back-to-back -back diodes and the feedback loop of this op amp. Now, if we take a look in closer detail, we see the input is going to the positive terminal. So this is the non-inverting configuration that we looked at. And the resistor in the feedback loop is actually a fixed resistor in series with a pot wired as a variable resistor. So that's what lets you control the overall gain of the configuration. Well, I should clarify, it would be the technical gain if you didn't have these clipping diodes. But when you put in the clipping diodes, it turns into something more like attempted gain. You might say failed gain, which is actually kind of the way guitar players actually use the word gain. When guitar players use the word gain, they really mean distortion. Although this is technically speaking an overdrive pedal and not what's usually called a distortion pedal. Although the distinctions are fairly fuzzy. And here's the Boss OD1 overdrive pedal. It's very similar to the Tube Screamer. So we have the electronic switching. We have an input and output consisting of emitter followers. And here we have the soft clipping stage with this variable resistor in the feedback loop. But notice something interesting here. This has asymmetric distortion. We have only one diode going to the right, but we have two diodes going to the left. So I thought that was pretty interesting. For another example, here's a schematic I ran across for the Marshall Blues Breaker pedal, not to be confused with the Marshall Blues Breaker amplifier. And when I say the such and such pedal, I probably should clarify that it's just one version of a particular pedal. Manufacturers would often change the design over the years. And also, a lot of these schematics aren't official from a manufacturer. This is probably reverse engineered from some physical unit. So everything should be taken with a bit of a grain of salt. Now, one thing I should have mentioned earlier is that guitar pedals typically run off a single-sided 9-volt supply. So usually what they'll do is they'll take that 9-volt and they'll split it to create a 4.5-volt reference voltage. That's kind of the internal ground to the pedal. And then there will always be some AC coupling capacitors at the input and the output of the guitar pedal. But internally, that 4.5 volts is sort of acting like a local ground. So in this op amp here, instead of seeing the plus going to ground, we'll see the plus is going to this VR that's a 4.5 volts, but it's the same idea. Anyway, here we see that the input is going through an op amp stage that is essentially acting as a buffer, but is also providing some gain. It's not obvious here, but it looks like this is meant to be a actual junction connection here. So this op amp is set up in a non-inverting configuration, and the gain knob here lets you change the amount of feedback. All right, so that lets you change the amount of signal that's going into this distortion stage. And we see that the signal is coming into the negative terminal. So this is the inverting configuration, unlike the non-inverting configuration we saw for the Ibanez Tube Screamer. So here we have a main resistor of 220K in the feedback loop. Here we have some back-to-back -back diodes. And interestingly, each quote-unquote diode going each direction actually consists of two diodes. So you'll have to hit a level of like two AKA diode drops in order for these diodes to start conducting. And these are in series with the 6.8K resistor. So this would generally be classed as an overdrive pedal. Here we have the schematic for one of the variations of the Boss DS1 distortion pedal. So we have an emitter follower at the input providing some buffering. We have an emitter follower at the output. This JFET and this JFET are just part of the switching mechanism. And if I zoom in here a bit, we can see where the actual distortion is taking place. These diodes aren't in any feedback loops of op amps. 
they're running back to back to this 4.5 volt that's operating as the internal ground for the pedal. So we have the current limiting resistor going into the diodes. So this is a hard clipping kind of distortion. What's driving it is an op amp in a non-inverting amplifier configuration. So the knob here lets the user control the amount of gain going into that distortion stage. In the last lecture, I talked about the ElectroSmash and GeoFX websites. I also recommend checking out the BeavisAudio.com website. There's a lot of cool stuff here, including a schematic of a variation of the Proco Rat Pedal. And let's see what's going on here. Ah, so I have current limiting resistor, back-to-back -back diodes shunting to ground. The output buffer here is a JFET set up as a source follower, so that's our voltage buffer. And the signal going into the hard clipping stage, that's being processed by this op amp here, set up as a non-inverting amplifier. And you can use the pot here to change the amount of feedback and change the amount of gain going into the hard clipping stage. And you can experiment with other kinds of diodes besides usual silicon diodes. For instance, the Klon Centaur has a hard clipping stage inside of it where the diodes used are actually germanium diodes. So those are going to have a lower quote-unquote diode drop, more like 300 millivolts instead of 700 millivolts like with a silicon diode. And you don't even necessarily need to use diodes. Pretty much any two-terminal nonlinear element will give you something interesting. So the Full Tone Full Drive 2 apparently lets you switch between two settings. One where you have asymmetric diodes in the feedback loop of an op amp in a non-inverting configuration. And another where instead of this asymmetric set of diodes, you have a diode going one direction, but then the other elements are actually diode-connected MOSFETs. So these are going to have a different IV characteristic than the silicon diodes will. There are many different versions of the Electroharmonix Big Muff pedal. The most well-known version has a series of distortion stages based on transistors. There's another version, and this particular version was reverse engineered by Gottfried Devos, which has a single op amp soft clipping stage in an inverting op amp configuration. You'll see the signal is coming in to the negative input here. And the back to back diode chains here have three diodes going either direction. So, what if you find it insufficient to just have either hard clipping or soft clipping and you want all the possible kinds of clipping? Well, you can get yourself a Boss Heavy Metal Distortion pedal. So, if we look at the kinds of distortion we have here, we find that there's this hard clipping stage with this resistor and these diodes to ground. Before that, we have some asymmetric soft clipping in this non-inverting amplifier configuration. And then we have something completely ridiculous. Apparently, we have a couple of germanium diodes back-to-back -back in series with the signal. That's going to give us pretty horrific crossover distortion. Like, the level has to hit a certain level before it can get through at all. And I just, I don't even want to think about that. I can't imagine that's not anything but horrible. I don't really know what's going on there. Why is that not just horrific? I don't know. Your mileage may vary. If you would like to dig into this sort of thing more, the ElectroSmash website contains a lot of fantastic analyses of various distortion and overdrive pedals. Clicking on the analysis of the Marshall Governor real quick, there's one other point I wanted to make. So the Marshall Governor has a hard clipping stage, but that's not the main thing I wanted to point out. The main thing I wanted to point out is this fairly complicated tone control stage at the output that's basically a tone stack like in a guitar amplifier. And pretty much every distortion and overdrive pedal I've seen has some sort of tone control on the output that includes some kind of high-pass filtering effect.
usually it's not this complicated. It may be something as simple as the kind of circuit you will actually see in the tone control in an electric guitar. But in any case, you usually have something, even if you don't have a control knob per se, that rolls off the high frequencies. Because all of the kinds of distortion we've talked about, whether it's something in a pedal that's labeled distortion, or it's the kind of distortion that's in a pedal that's labeled overdrive. Yeah, I know it's confusing. All of those kinds of effects tend to make your sound a little bit fizzy. So there's usually some sort of low pass operation at the output to reduce some of that fizz. Now, if you are not one of my Georgia Tech students, you can check out here. But if you are one of my Georgia Tech students, I would like you to go onto Canvas and you will find a quiz associated with this lecture. All I want you to do is to search around on the internet looking for schematics of various guitar effects pedals and find me an example of a circuit that uses hard clipping, as we've described it here, and find me an example of a circuit that uses soft clipping, as we've defined it here. The soft clipping can use either inverting or non-inverting amplifier configurations. So give me the name of the pedal and also give me a link to the schematic for each instance, one of hard clipping and one of soft clipping. Oh, and obviously it should not be one of the designs that I've already looked at in this video.